Good day. I'm Opita Tassisius, senior, senior engineer with Automation Tanzania, and I'm pleased to share with you about the topic of rapid deployment of solar powered water systems under design and certainty in humanitarian context. Automation is a non profit, phase based engineering organization with offices in 10 countries. Our mission is to de de develop, implement, and share best in class safe water solutions. We work in both the emergency and de development context with a focus on rural and pre-urban community and institution water systems. Water Mission began implementing solar-powered water systems in 2008 and have gained expertise in designing, building and operating these systems. In Tanzania, our programs are primarily focused in the western Kigoma region, the central Dodoma region and our head office in Dar es Salaam. In today's presentation, I would like to share with you a field example of how Water Mission Tanzania addressed rapid deployment of solar powered water systems during an emergency. I will share some of the challenges that we faced, as well as solutions we used to address those challenges. At which point, I'll share some lessons learned from this experience that can be relevant to others that are engaged in similar endeavors. Uh, as you may know, Kipo is located along the shores of Lake Tanganyika. I would like to present some basic facts about Lake Tanganyika. This lake is located in western Tanzania and bordered by Burundi, Tanzania, DR, DR Congo, and Zambia. It is the largest lake in the world, measuring over 600 kilometers long, and the second largest lake in the world, with an average volume of 19,000 cubic kilometers, and is the deepest lake in Africa and contributes about 16% of freshwater supply in the world. Kipwa is in Kalambo district on the shores of Lake Tanganyika. On May 2021, Kipwa was flooded by water from the lake as a result of extreme rains. The floods affected 35,000 people in 700 households. Most of the households and their houses either damaged or submerged. As a, as a response to this, Water Mission Tanzania deployed its team, its team to provide safe water to the affected community. Along the shores of Lake Tanganyika, a lot of communities were affected, but Kipo was more in need than others because it is surrounded by lake and steep mountains, which cut it off from important services. The lake was selected as a water source from a technical perspective due to better water quality than a nearby river. And a quick access for rapid deployment of wash solutions versus developing a borehole. The disadvantage is that this source requires higher degree of treatment than boreholes. So both filtration and disinfection were planned. Prior to the site visit, a design was prepared based on a satellite imagery. This first design was assuming the community to be residing on the lower left part of the satellite imagery on this slide. However, upon visiting the community, we found out they were evacuated to the upper left part of the imagery. This new realization necessitated to perform a redesigning. The design considered both the immediate need and the long-term need of support. <coughs> Uh, here, I would like to give you a brief description of the implemented system. On the upper left is an intake system which comprises of a Grand Force 11 SQF-2 helical rotor submissible solar pump encased in a perforated GI casing. The installed pump was powered by a hybrid power, power system of 6, 6 kVA generator and 1.7 kilowatt solar array, which is shown on the upper or upper right image. And the pumped water was filtered and disinfected by water mission living water treatment system, which is shown on the lower right image. The treated water was distributed to the community by a distribution system comprising of two distribution points of four outlets each. A typical distribution point is shown in the lower left image. The constructed structures were of high quality despite the fact that all the works were done in just one month. Uh, due to urgent needs, there was a little planning time. 
the design need to be finalized throughout execution, which necessitated an agile approach. Uh, the team arrived at the site with little information regarding what would be the water source to use either the Sanganyika or the river, and also how to reach the site. Uh, due to insufficient information, it was hard to predefine the scope, budget, and schedule until the team arrived at the field. Also, some standards were difficult to meet due to the nature of the location and soil time. For instance, excavation of, of one meter deep trench on a hard rock was a challenge. In the process of selecting water source, we had to go through an intensive training to transform the community's mind because they were refusing to use the lake due to some traditional taboos. Uh, and now here are the solutions uh, for the challenge that we encountered. Uh, first of all, uh, the use of uh, design and build implementation method uh, provided a rapid ability to change design based on site conditions. Uh, and also the use of solar generator hybrid power system gave ability to extend operational hours if solar power alone was not sufficient to meet demands. And organizational forethought that adapt standards and processes to the emergence context versus a normal development project. Uh, things like a streamlined forms and approvals or authorization during emergency response. Uh, and also, we we try to mobilize the local the local resources uh, of the community to help overcome the challenge. For uh, example, we hired a boat to afford easier community accessibility and material mobilization. Implementation of solar powered safe water projects at Kipa community delivered a consistent accessibility of safe and clean water to the families affected by, by the flooding and also decreased the significantly waterborne diseases uh, as reported by a local clinic here at Kipwa. Water usage records indicate approximately 10,000 liters of water were collected each day on average. For the target population of 3,500 people, this means safe water usage was around 3 liters per person per day. Creating access to the safe water in the community reduced the risk of using untreated water from a nearby river, which had some reported cases of four people getting killed by crocodiles while fetching water. Uh, implementing the project in an emergency context had some challenge but these were addressed by the project team as described previously. From this implementation, we have learned the following important lessons. First, we have learned that making preliminary plans is good, but nothing compares to the on-ground assessment to determine the final plans that must be implemented to serve the local needs. And second, even in emergency work, uh, it is critically important to engage the local community by informing and educating them of the plan so as to gain their acceptance. Uh, thank you very much for, for your time. Have a nice day.